welcome back students so in this uh, lecture we will look at a special type of dislocations it is called partial dislocation so you use so far whatever dislocation we have looked at is formed when you have that smallest lattice vector smallest translation vector and that gives to a full dislocation but as you will see that there is also a possibility of getting partial dislocation mean and uh, this partial dislocation we will first have to see check whether it is energetically favorable or not and uh, we would also see what are the verger's vector for this and this is most common in fcc type of material so we will start from or we will look into the partial dislocations in fcc system so let's look at it so in fcc we know the slip system is a by 2 one one zero and the plane is one 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 now this one 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 plane for fcc has a very different kind of structure in the sense that it has abc abc type of packing so this a one 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 has abc abc type of packing what this leads to is that the extra half plane that forms is actually not just one plane but it is a combination of two planes let's see how so on the left cube is a fcc shown to you and the 111 planes are marked and you can clearly see that there are three different arrangement of atoms if you were to look at it uh, the three arrangements in terms of atoms this is how it will look like so you can see clearly these are three different arrangements the a b and the c it is not that a and c are the same so yes there are three layers a b c when we look at a 111 plane which is shown over here now let's draw this 111 plane over here and we know that it has the verger's vector a by 2 1 1 that we know will be on one of its edges so each of these are of the type a by 2 1 1 0 and the shortest translation would be a by 2 1 1 0 so when an extra half plane forms that extra half plane will have to move from this point to this point that is what will happen when the deformation takes place and the dislocation moves so let's keep this in mind because this one we will have to utilize this information and this knowledge we will utilize several times in the next slides so here is the abc abc type of packing and looking at this you will have this is your 111 plane and this would be your a by 2 110 type of translation vector so if the dislocation were to be present here like this it will have to move from here all the way over to here for one translation according to this burgers vector but we'll see that there is a smaller burgers vector possible and that is what we will call as partial dislocation so let's say so we saw that this is the direction for the burgers vector so let's say we have a missing plane so this extra plane has been removed but when you look at this ex removed extra plane or removed half plane so the bottom side or the one we are looking at the red and the blue layer on that side you have the extra half plane and on the side towards us is the missing half plane so what we see is that this gap the white window that we see is actually in two parallel layers so this is one layer and this is another layer and the another one would be over here and then another one would be somewhere over here so this is these are the two layers and which have been drawn by two lines so what we thought of or what we would have thought of to be just one dislocation actually happens to be two extra half planes or two missing uh, missing planes depending on which side you are looking at but is it really two half planes or is it just that it appears to be so so let's say that one layer of atoms move to the other side then what do we see over here or uh, to be precise actually we will not be moving the whole thing 
we are moving just one the atoms are moving to one step not the full step but a partial step let's call it partial step so this atom is moving partial step over here this is moving over here this is moving over here so they are not moving the whole distance but only a partial distance and how would it look like after this partial movement partial movement of the atoms of one layer this is how it would look like so now you can clearly see that there is a actually missing half plane over here there is also a missing half plane over here but to form this the atoms had not moved the full dislocation or the full dis translation vector by the full translation vector they had moved only one step or partial displacement they had taken one partial displacement the other partial displacement would be this one so it moved from here to here and now let's say if all of these move over here then what will happen again it forms the full dislocation so now we can be confident or we can be we are very convinced that this full dislocation is actually sum of two partial dislocations and this becomes or uh, this particular vector diagram makes the orientation the configuration much clearer so this is the full dislocation burgers vector and these are the burgers vector for the partial dislocations so how would this partial dislocation look like so let's try to understand this with respect to a drawing over here so we said this is a 1 1 1 layer so it looks something like this of course it is not accurate uh, because i have drawn it by hand but we can still get understanding so what we looked at earlier was that this is the full dislocation vector and this is the partial one this is partial two now i will draw it separately so this is full dislocation this is these are the two partial dislocations so this one is of the form this one the full dislocation has the Berger vector form of the type a by 2 1 1 0 on the other hand this one you can show it uh, from the geometry by calculating the angles that this one it is actually 30 degree angle that this one is of the type a by 6 2 1 1 so both of them are symmetric so this is also a by 6 2 1 1 okay so over here it does look like this location can move like this but the next and more important question is is it energetically favorable and how do we calculate that simple we take the square of the Berger's vector and compare the sum of the partials with the full uh, if the sum of the partials is lower then it means the total energy for the partials is lower and therefore it is favorable for the full dislocation to dissociate into partials so let's take the values a by 2 1 1 0 on one side on the other side we have a by 6 2 1 1 okay, and into 2 times so to, we will take the square of this because energy is proportional to Berger's vector square so a square by 4 and 1 square plus 1 square is equal to 2 and on this side 2 from 2 different dislocations and a square by 36 and 2 square plus 1 square plus 1 square is equal to 6 so this becomes a square by 6 and this whole thing is a square by 3 and this whole thing is a square by 2. So clearly this quantity is smaller which means that this is energetically favorable and it would also mean that full 
this location would like to dissociate into partials. So this is just one, uh, this is a overall generalization of the various vectors. And now I will give you one specific example. So the full dislocation A by two bar one zero one can break down into A by six bar two one one plus A by six bar one bar one two. Now when you're trying to find the, dis, uh, the partials from a full dislocation, you have to keep a couple of things in mind. One, that the sum of these must come back to this, that is vectorial sum. So vectorial sum is something that you have to keep in mind. Second, is that the glide plane must be same. So here we are assuming it is a one, one, one type of plane on which this uh, Burgess vector is there. Therefore, the dot product of A111 with this is zero and so should be the dot product of these two. So let's take one 111 dot product and yes, this is indeed zero. 111 dot product and thus, yes, indeed, this is zero. So these two things you have to keep in mind when trying to find out what would or what would be the partials for a given Burgess vector of a FCC. And for this, we can again take the help of our old friend Thompson's tetrahedron. So you can see this is a bar one, bar one, one plane, and this is your 0, 1, 1, 1, Burgess, uh, 0, 1, 1, 1 vector. And the Burgess vector would be A by two. So when this one breaks or dissociates, then the two vectors that would form from this are A by six, one, one, two, and negative of this, meaning A by six, bar one, two, one. And why did I say negative? Because this one is showing you which direction it is going. So if this is going in this direction, then this one plus this one. So this one you have to take negative or you can take the negative the, of the other two, sorry, negative of this one. So either one you will have to take the negative. So that is how it is drawn. But the important thing is that you are able to obtain the partial dislocation Burgers vector also from this Thomson tetrahedron. Not only the planes and glide planes and the possible Burgers full dislocation Burgers vector, but also the, par the partial dislocation Burgers vector can be obtained from Thomson's tetrahedron. So that is the beauty of Thomson's tetrahedron. Now, before I uh, move on, I would like to show you another perspective or another view of the dislocations, like what we are calling as extra two extra planes or in the FCC system, which form the partial dislocations. So let's say we have, I draw the two with two different colors. So these are the two different layers. So these are the alternate layers. Basically, what we have over here is the one, one, one plane. So this is your This is the one, one, one plane, and these are the various atom layers that we saw over here in the earlier picture. So these are, there are always two, or they're always in pair. 
So when we have the extra plane also, then there are two, there are pair of it. And this is your 110 direction. And here, if we were to draw it, this is how it would look like partial dislocation one, partial dislocation two, so that the whole thing is actually one full dislocation. So this is usual way of representing these partial dislocations and this is, these are the dislocation, this is the full dislocation. And uh, we have now looked at what would be the Burgess vector for these and how to obtain the Burgess vector. And the easiest method is to find the Burgess vector by Thomson's tetrahedron, uh, using the Thomson's tetrahedron. Now, the last thing that we want to understand here, or we would like to touch upon here is that now that we have seen here that there are two partial dislocations. So these are two partial dislocations. Now, there would also be interaction between these two dislocations because these are two different dislocations. And therefore, what would happen is that there would be a force, a repulsive force, net repulsive, actually, there will be a screw component and an edge component. And based on that, you can calculate the net repulsive, but we will not go to get into that detail. We would just know that we know that there is a partial dislocation one, partial dislocation two, and therefore there will be a net repulsive force. So by this logic, it should keep moving out, but that is not the case. When these dislocations uh, move out, you see that there is a stacking fault created. You see that ideally there should not have been any uh, gap after ABC layers, but here we see this gap. Why? Because here there is a stacking fault. It is no more ABC, ABC, but it is AB, AB kind of packing in between. And therefore this is stacking fault will have some energy associated with it. So the further the partials go, the larger would be the stacking fault. And therefore that energy would like to minimize, which would mean that it would like the two partials to come together. So there is a, this uh, repulsive force, which wants to push the partials away and the energy of the stacking fault, which wants to bring the two partials together. And therefore in the end, what you will have is, uh, equilibrium, equilibrium width of partials. What, what are the two counteracting forces? One is the repulsion of partials versus energy of stacking fault in the, that has been created. So that together they will find some equilibrium condition, let's say it is D. So then you will reach some D and you can actually calculate the value of D. It is usually of the order of two to three lattice parameter, two to three times the B. So this, uh, lecture has given us the introduction to partial dislocations uh, and in F, particularly in FCC system. So F, what we had seen so far were full or complete dislocations. But in real systems, the dislocations are a little bit more complicated. And we saw that in FCC, there is something called as partial dislocations. And it also happens to be energetically favorable. And we were also able to obtain the Burgers vector for these two. So we'll stop our lecture over here. Thank you.